Welcome back everybody to another episode of my series, Interview with a Roadie. And in this series, I get to sit down with artists, band members, other roadies, and anybody else in the music industry, and we just have conversations about whatever we want. And in today's episode, I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with Nicholas Carlson of Orbit Culture. And this one came together really fast, man. From the time I originally brought this up to him, it was less than 24 hours that we actually sat down and filmed this conversation. And I was really excited, man. And I talked a little much, but it was super fun. We got to talk about the history of the band, their upcoming EP Shaman, some of Nicholas's musical influences and vocal influences, and a lot of the stuff that they have planned for the future. And even after we finished filming this conversation, we ended up sitting on Zoom and talking for another 90 minutes or so, just kind of getting to know each other, man. And I love this guy. He's an absolutely awesome person, and I can't wait for you guys to check this out and get to know him a little better. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy this next 40 minutes or so of a conversation between myself and Nicholas Carlson. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I have a very special guest with us. We've got Nicholas Carlson from Sweden's very own Orbit Culture. How are you doing today, man? I'm uh, feeling awesome talking awesome. with you today, for sure. Dude, I'm, I'm so happy to have you here, man, because it's it's been no secret to anybody on my channel that um, since I started doing reactions, um, I've discovered a lot of new music, a lot of music that I never would have found otherwise because working in the music industry, I've been very secluded. And it's no secret to anybody that you guys are one of, if not my favorite band, I've discovered in the last year. And that's, you know, I don't mean to sit here and like inflate your ego, but it's <laughs> it's it's very it's very awesome to have you here, man. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. So let's just, you know, one of the things I like to do on these is just to get the backstory. I want people to get to know you just more than just the guy in the band they like. So, and there's a lot of information online that sometimes is inaccurate. So there's, there's kind of some stuff I just want to confirm with you, but, um, starting with the history of the band, um, from what I've seen, you, you started this band in around 2013. That's correct. And self-released pretty much everything until the last couple years. Now, one of the interesting things that I saw, I, I find this hard to believe, but I would love to know. I saw something that said that you guys actually didn't play your first show until somewhere in the last couple years. Is that true or no? Uh, that's not true. We okay. actually played a um, like a small release party for our... Uh, actually, when we did the debut EP, uh, it was not called Odyssey. It was just called Orbit Culture. And uh, we released that back in like August 2013 or whatever. And we actually played our first show in a in a bar in our local hometown. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I figured there's no way that that's, that was accurate. But um, so like any band you guys over the years you had some member changes and stuff like that but the lineup that you guys have right now i would say is the orbit culture lineup that everybody's familiar with and you know you guys signed with seek and strike a couple years ago and started releasing that but i have a couple parts to this question but one of the things that i'm really impressed by is that you are credited as mixing engineering mastering all your releases man and yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't see a lot of labels let bands do that. So when you're like with your mixing and stuff like that, did you do any schooling for that, or is that something that you just picked up when you were younger and got into it? Uh, I think the recording part started around 2012 or something. Uh, I actually took a year off school uh, just to be home, you know. Uh, <laughs> Not doing much. And then uh, I actually found a recording school up in the northern parts of Sweden here, uh, which I attended for two years. And, uh, you know, I learned, you know, quite some stuff up there, but I think it was that, you know, the, the span of two years just sitting in, in a bedroom and just, you know, fiddling with stuff and watching YouTube tutorials all day that really made, you know, made some changes happening. Mm -hmm. that's that's wild man because i mean again not to inflate your ego but like 
all of your releases sound fantastic. And it's one of the things I've brought up on my channel is like, you know, usually labels will send bands to record with big time producers, big name producers and huge studios. And all of your guys' stuff that's mixed by you is like, I, it's, it's, it's up there with some of the best sounding stuff. And I just have to say, you know, good job on that, man, because it's, <laughs> Thank you, you, don't, do. <laughs> you don't, um, you don't hear that. And going into my next thing is, you know, you guys signed with Seek and Strike Records and you guys strike me and have the sound that I would have assumed at some point a major label would have picked you guys up. So I'm curious to know what it was about Seek and Strike that attracted you guys as a band. I think my guess is with a lot of major labels, it's kind of a creative thing. Like they kind of rein you in and don't let you do what you want to do. Is that something that Seek and Strike really like showed you guys was they're going to let you guys have creative control over everything? Uh, yeah, ar around that time when they came into the picture, there were actually, I think it was five different labels that were, you know, sending their contracts and stuff over. And, uh, but we talked, you know, the most with, with uh, Randy from Seek and Strike over like a video call like this. And, uh, you Fantastic know, dude, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we, we felt that right out of the spot because we have been up until that point, we we as much as we wanted to sign a contract we also we were very protective you know about our stuff and they and they very very much respect that too so they don't interfere with any you know any creative work they just take the stuff and you know try to push it out there to the masses and they uh, and they do it quite a good job at it for sure dude I I think that's fantastic, and like I said, I've I've had conversations with Randy, and right away he stri strikes me as the kind of person that, like, you know, I know his background of working with other labels and stuff like that, and not to say that nobody at other labels is less into music, but he seems like he's genuinely just stoked on good music that he finds, and he just wants Absolutely. to put it out, and that's that's so cool to me, man. And, you know, again, just going back to that creative thing, it's so cool that, to see that, like... He just lets you guys, you know, produce and mix and all that stuff. And it's really impressive, man. You know, they've they've really become a label that's caught my attention lately, especially as a new label, because all the bands on there that I've checked out, I've loved. And it's, um, in my opinion, it's obviously you guys leading the way right now. But I think in the future, they're going to be a, a huge contender, man. And I just, I just, it's it's really cool to see happening, I guess, is what I'm getting at. So Absolutely. we just got our first taste of new music from your new EP with uh, Flight of the Fireflies. Uh, fantastic song and video. And going back to the production stuff, I was so impressed with how it sounded. But at the same time, there was something about it that struck me as a little different from what I've heard from you guys before. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, it, it evolved a little. It matured a little bit. So what was, going into this new EP, what was your approach with the overall sound and the influence that was going into everything? Um, like when it comes to the production side, uh, with the mixing and stuff, I, I, I tend to find that our previous releases always lacked some bass or it was, you know, everything was like too crushed. And uh, I think that's a result of just, you know, sitting too much with it rather than just make up a mix for like, a day and just call it you know final mm -hmm. so i think that's what's happened with the sh shaman uh, compared to nidia where i like sat down with one song for like three weeks straight you know you know and just doing horrible shit with it <laughs> yeah yeah you can, you can overthink it sometimes <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure and and i don't mean to say that like i thought everything on nidia was just dude I've said it, it's one of my favorite albums of last year from start to finish. And it's not often that I find a record that I can listen to from start to finish and it's just great. And this just seems like a continuation of that. And one of the things I, I feel like I have to ask because a lot of people in the comments were talking about it is the ending to that song yeah. <laughs> was, dude, it like took me by surprise because I it went to a different direction. But the effect that you had going on there, was that just like a whammy dive or a pitch shift on the guitars to give it that mega low tone? 
Yeah, um, we use uh, Axe Effects and, and you know the Axe Eight stuff, all, all the fractal stuff. We love mm -hmm. that. <laughs> That's what <laughs> but, I use uh, on the road. I'm familiar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, they, I think uh, they have this simulation of the DT whammy, the red one. Yep. Uh, and I, you know. I like to use that a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's but, that's the go-to that we would use on tour too. So I'm very wow. familiar. But uh, at the same time, you know, these uh, neural DSP plugins have gotten so good right now. So I have actually sold one of the fractal pieces, but um, yeah, we will see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's the the digital um, the digital game with tones lately, man, has been so good. Like ten years ago, I don't know if I would have been fully sold on it. But when when we switched from tube amps on the road to the digital rigs, I was I was kind of fighting it. I was like, nah, <laughs> like I don't believe. And then the first time we got our hands on the the Axe three units, I was like, I'm yeah. sold. Like these, yeah. it's fantastic. So, one of the things I would love to talk to you about um, is I saw one of your fans had linked an interview with Revolver to me. It said, hey, considering your background and how open you've been about this stuff, I think you'd find this interesting. And I saw that you had talked to Revolver about the whole background of Flight of the Fireflies being about your experience pretty much with alcoholism during the pandemic. And like you said in that interview, like a lot of people went through that experience, especially in the pandemic. People didn't know what to do. People were self-medicating because they were stressed or scared or whatever. And I kind of just wanted to talk to you about that for a minute because I've had my fair share of um, issues with alcoholism in the past. And you know, especially in the, the metal and music scene and stuff like that, it's a big thing. Like everybody's drinking all the yeah. time. So at what point did you, did you get to a spot where you were just like, yeah, this is probably too much. I, I guess, um, here in Sweden, we, you know, we, most of us adults are, you know, we have uh, like four or five weeks off every summer. And, uh, I think it started, it started quite a bit in um, you know in the spring last year when, when this pandemic started there and uh, you know me and my friends just you know what should we do well, uh, yeah let's drink and you know that just evolved to like four to five times a week and uh, you know the everything it, it it was problematic in that sense you know it costs a shitload of money yeah. <laughs> it, it 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 fucks up your mental health. You can, you can barely sleep anymore. You know, it, and it, you know you gain weight and stuff. It's it's not preferable at all. And uh, I th yeah, I, I think it was you know around the late summer there that I felt like this has gone a bit way overboard. And uh, and uh, of course it goes. It, it, it sometimes it comes back, but. Uh, mm -hmm. I try to keep keep it somewhat controlled, even 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 if that's you know I don't know if it's possible with alcohol or any other drug or substance, but uh, it helps to have a good you know uh, girlfriend <laughs> to support yeah. you through that shit. Yep, yeah, it's it's wild, man. Because I've um, you know I've I've had my fair share of friends that have gone through a lot of substance abuse issues, especially on tour, because like even me. When, we, when I was still drinking, we'd have days off on tour and I'd wake up on the bus in the morning and be like, well, got nothing to do. Let's drink. Like, you yeah. know, and and I, I personally, I have I have nothing against uh, drinking or anybody that drinks or stuff like that. I, I just, I didn't like the person I was starting to be when I was drinking. And a lot of that, like you just said, comes from having a good partner. Like my wife, even at one point, and it, it like crushes me to say this, but at one point my wife was like, yeah, you got to a point where like, I couldn't tell when you were sober or when you were drunk. And it's yeah. like, that was a huge wake up moment for me. And I, I believe it can be controlled. There are certain people that can have a few drinks and stuff like that and it's fine, but I know me, like I can't. So I ended up stopping and I just thought that was super cool that you brought that up because in the music industry, not a lot of people want to talk about uh, mental health or substance abuse. And I feel as though a lot of people that watch, watch their favorite bands, they see them performing huge shows and selling records and stuff. And they just think that everything's like perfect. The, like, like I said before, the human element is almost ripped away from some artists because, you know, they're, they're on a stage, they're on a pedestal yeah. and people don't think they're affected in the same way, but they obviously are. So absolutely. Uh, and then that affected 
Flight of the Fireflies lyrically from what I saw a lot. Like that was your story. Absolutely. Do you want to tell, tell me a little about that in terms of like how that came about and how you decided to write that? Um, you know, I think it's, I came down from like a four or five day binge drinking at, you know, at the same bar, at the same place, just came home. I like, I think, you know, I, I, I didn't miss any deadlines or anything, but I, I had to work with my regular day job and do orbit stuff at the same time. But, you know, it's impossible to do all that shit at the same time. And I felt like I can't be productive if I continue doing this shit all the time. And uh, so, yeah, I just came home late at night and just just wrote wrote it all down on, on like a small piece of paper <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, came back the next day and uh, finished up the song. Wow, man, that's that's wild. It's 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 yeah. almost it's almost very it's almost a very vulnerable thing to do to 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 put yourself out there like that, especially. You know, on a first time listen, people may not know that that's exactly what that's about, but it's a very vulnerable thing to write your thoughts and your 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 fears or whatever you have out and release it like that. So, dude, I'm excited for this new EP, man, like really excited. And for anybody that's not familiar, I assume everybody that's watching this is already familiar with you, so they probably know. But Shaman comes out September 24th from Seek right. and Strike, of course. And, you know, there's there's pre-orders available. And for anybody that's watching, I always link that stuff below. So if you want to support the bands, you can go check it out. But I always like to ask you guys with new releases, like, in your opinion, as somebody that's in the band, what's the best way that listeners and viewers and fans of yours can actually do to, like, help support you guys in their music? What would you recommend that they actually do to support a new album? Um... I don't know really you know I sh the share button works pretty good <laughs> from yeah. what i've seen but uh, but also you know uh, a lot of uh, our fans are like the best people because they're they are like everywhere riding on all the platforms uh you know to all these reactors and stuff so that's been very helpful and of course when it comes to like support you know merch is our best friend mm -hmm. when it comes to that stuff so yeah, it's funny you say that because when I talked to Adam from Lorna Shore recently and I asked him this similar question, the sharing thing was his biggest thing. He was yeah. like, he you know, he brought up merch and stuff like that, but he goes, honestly, at this point, especially in the age we're in, he goes, just share our music everywhere. Show it to people. Like, that's the best way. Absolutely. And that's in the time we're in right now. I mean, that's how I discovered you guys. Like, the metal community as a whole has always been big on word of mouth. But especially in the digital age that we're in, people are able to share stuff all over the place. And, you know, coming from where you guys came from, your hometown is right in the middle of like Stockholm on one end, Gothenburg on the other. And even Americans are very familiar with like the Gothenburg sound. They know that metal comes out of Sweden. But even for me, when I discovered your band, I was shocked because you had already been out for a few years and I had never heard it. And it's just... It's just wild how much music there is out there that'll never be discovered. But um, so this is kind of an area that you probably get asked a lot, but I am kind of curious, is more of your influences writing music. And I want to start on kind of your vocal stuff. I think it's no secret to anybody that <laughs> listens that like you get compared to Hetfield a lot. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then I've also, I, for me, I also hear a little bit of like that Chuck Billy. It's more the 80s thrash influence. Yeah, but in this latest release, you've it it sounded more that you've you've found your own voice. Like I would have not compared it to the Hatfield or Chuck Billy or anything like that this time. And I think it's fantastic how you mix the harsh vocals and the clean vocals. Now, growing up where you grew up, I assume that Gothenburg bands were a big influence on you. But you have a very distinct harsh vocal set. Like, it's very recognizable. It's very different from a lot of singers in that scene. When you were first starting with music and vocals and stuff, did you have a particular influence with your harsh vocals that you really wanted to kind of sound like? Or did you just find your voice on your own and be like, yeah, this is it, I'm going with it? I guess, who were your, like, harsh vocal influences that you really liked? You know, I love, uh, I still love Winston from Parkway, uh, Parkway Drive there. Yes. Uh, 
and I think that you know, without Parkway Drive, I w- would still like hate grill music because I was not into that at all. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, their album Deep Blue came, and uh, oh. you know, uh, around the same time there, I uh, f- uh, discovered Gudira with with the way of old flesh and that stuff, and that's you know that it started to spin away. And um, but yeah, <laughs> when it comes to my own harsh vocals, I uh, I think it came from I. When we recorded the Odyssey EP there, um, I, I just sh- you know shouted everything I could, and I I you know it tasted blood in my mouth, and I I fainted sometime too. So uh, it just came down to oh yeah, I guess I have to sit down and record the vocals, and then I like like leaned down like this, and the uh, you know it started to the pitch started start to drop, and uh, yeah, and I think I. I don't know the technique or anything about that. I, but I feel it's it feels like a. I don't know how to explain it, but uh, it it feels uh, it feels like it, the whole throat throat is moving in some way, but it, yeah. it doesn't hurt because I think the power comes from the uh, diaphragm there. So yeah. I think I. I hope I'm doing it right. Well, I was, I I was about to ask, <laughs> since since you've started, have you done any kind of vocal training or is everything you're doing just you figured it out? Yeah, uh, you no know, trial and error. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, of course, I w- watched the uh, Sen of Screaming by, I think, yep. Melissa Cross uh, a couple of times. But uh, yeah, it's just practice, but practice you know, easily. <laughs> yeah, dude, Tom from Evergrey told me the same thing when he first started. He never wanted to sing. And he was like, when we got into the studio and I was doing vocals, he goes, I was like, I didn't know how to sing right. I was like passing out half the time. No. <laughs> like, like that's, that's kind of funny, man. Like, dude, but it's, it's, it's great, man. And it's like, I, I find it fascinating hearing stories like that because, you know, some of, some of my favorite musicians, I know for sure, we're all self-taught on everything, like e- even vocals. Like there's so many metal singers out there that like they just trial and error figured it out. Like they they don't know if they're doing it right. They just know how to do it and what they're doing. And then obviously with your, with again, going back to your guitar playing, the first time I saw the music video for Saw, I saw that. <laughs> I saw the Explorer and then when you got to your clean vocal part, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, this dude loves Metallica for Absolutely. sure. And and um, I find it so cool that you guys are, are using Solar now and yes. and they've got an Explorer type guitar for you. Absolutely. Was that was that super cool to um, like ink a deal with a guy like Ola, who's I mean, huge guitar name in your own country. And now you're with his company. Yeah. You know, when when that's happened, you know, it felt surreal because. We ha- he has been dropping some comments on our videos, you know. I saw a- almost since you know, 2015 or something, and uh, we we were like just starstruck by that. So we and then I think, I think it was Richard who started to like talk to him on his private uh, Facebook or something, and yeah, he just hooked up, uh, hooked us up with some cool ass guitars. So yeah. That's but awesome. uh, um, the reason that I use these Epiphones and stuff is that uh, the Solar is my main guitar, and uh, it, I don't want to ruin any settings on it or anything like that. You know, um, especially in the flight of the Fireflies video there, where we were outside. You know, it was late at night. You know, very humid. Is that the word for it? Yeah. So uh, I have to like sacrifice one of the Epiphones. And stuff. Yeah, I, I, I kind of. So we had actually, I, I actually asked you that question about a week ago because. I, I'm kind of surprised that I didn't catch that, like in the video, because you know a lot of times music videos you have product placement and stuff like that, and it kind of blew my mind when I watched it. I was like, I know he uses Solar exclusively, but he's got his Epiphone back out, and for some reason I never even thought about that. I was like, <laughs> you know, when when you see videos that have like like rain effects or they're outside or stuff, it's like nobody wants to ruin their good gear. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, R- Richard doesn't give a shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, the funny thing was is that after you told me I didn't want to ruin my guitar, I was like, uh, well, <laughs> Richard's using the, yeah. the Type V, and I was like, Frederick's rocking his dingwall. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> that's so but, um, funny. At the same time, you know, uh, Ola has been very open. You know, if, if, if we want to use something else in a video he's totally fine with it so you know awesome dude 
Yeah, sure. that's that's what Richard had told me. He's like, he's like, Ola just sent me this guitar for this video because I usually play the Type A's, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like that's that's so cool, man. For somebody like me coming from a tech background, I've handled a lot of endorsements for the artists I've worked for, and I've talked to a lot of guitar companies. And nobody is usually that cool. Like, they don't no. just like, oh, yeah, I'll just send you something. No problem. There's usually so many hoops to jump through. Like, I, Ola just seems like like the best guy to run a guitar company. Absolutely. For yeah. Sure. That's awesome. So going back to um, kind of mixing touring and the pandemic, you know, the thing that, that I really feel for bands about during this whole COVID situation was, like, any momentum that you guys had going – probably initially felt stalled like everything you wanted to do you had to cancel a tour like yeah. now like sitting here for a year i would i personally would actually kind of argue um there's been some good in this time because like people have been sharing music and there's been more exposure and stuff like that so while you haven't been able to tour i actually feel as though no momentum has really been lost but going back to the touring part I think I saw you guys do have a tour scheduled uh, later this year. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we we uh, you know we have no info about it that I could share yet. Yeah, uh, yeah, no worries. I'm afraid, but uh, yeah, we had as many other bands. You know, 2020 all like fully booked with festival gigs, and we even had like a small headline tour in Germany that we were going to, but. Uh, at the same time, when the pandemic, you know, hit, we, uh, I think it was good, especially because then that gave us very, uh, time to really finish up media in a proper way, because it was getting kind of stressful there because we, we released singles at the same time as we were recording at, at the same time as we were recording the music videos too. Mm -hmm. So we were, we had too much, you know, was too, too much stuff in the air to handle so yeah but yeah uh, now we, we just can't wait to get out we are we are rehearsed and prepared so we, we need to yeah go that's I'm, I'm excited for you guys because i i did get to catch um uh, your live stream from i think it was the not fast live stream yeah and, and that's like and the the live streams are great man they're great for the fans to be able to see their bands but let's be honest it's it's not the same like no. It's somebody, somebody asked me early on in the pandemic, they're like, do you think this will be a thing now? Like, is this going to replace live shows? And I was like, no fucking way. Like, there's no, not. <laughs> there's no way. Now, will it, will it hold people over for a little bit? Sure. But people want to get back to shows. And I know every country is handling things different, but right now in the U.S., it's festival season, dude. I was seeing some of my friends that are back out on tour, like, 50,000 capacity festivals like oh. nothing's happening and I'm just like and then I talked to um, uh, Sushi from Ghost Kid uh, the other day and last night he was flying to Ukraine to do a show and I was like are you doing a festival? He's like yeah huge festival. I was like really? Shit is it like, already happening? <laughs> yeah so I was like what? okay I mean things are coming back slowly but surely but I can't like have you ever been to the states? No, uh, yeah, yeah on, the, okay. on a vacation, but not like with the orbit. Or not, anything. not with the band, dude. I'd like I was I was talking to some people the other night, and I was like, I'm at the age where like my pit days are over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I was the guy. I was in the middle of every pit at every metal show when I was a kid, and nowadays I like I kind of go by the front of house console because I, that's usually the best it's going to sound, and you're right by who's mixing. But the first time I ever get to see you guys. I no joke, dude. I'm gonna be front row. <laughs> like I'm gonna be front row, head banging my ass off, and I'm excited for you guys, man. I'm really excited for you guys because I I legitimately 100% believe that in the next couple years, you guys are 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 gonna be a name to contend with in the in the metal scene for sure. I think you're gonna be Thank getting you, a man. lot of tours over here and everywhere else, and I'm just legitimately excited for you guys because you know from what I see from my experience, like you guys work hard. You guys put out good music. Like, it's just things are lining up, man. And I'm really excited to see where you guys go. Thanks a lot, dude. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Um, one fun thing I want to talk about. So, in your Hardwired cover video that you guys did, you're rocking 
a hockey jersey. I think you had a Pittsburgh yeah. jersey on, right? Okay. That's correct. <laughs> are you are you guys all big hockey fans? Uh, yeah, you know, that comes in waves too. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to call myself a bandwagon fan, but I, yeah. it was a lot of games when, you know, Penguins won the back-to-back season yeah. there and Dude. stuff. But yeah, but I, uh, yeah, I love, I love the team for sure. But yeah, I, yeah. I haven't watched that much, but Richard watch, watches a lot for sure. Yeah. So, so you would say like, if you, if you had an NHL team, it's definitely Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Dude, and it's, it's you know, I love the hockey culture in a lot of the Nordic countries up there because, like, we've had I'm – a, I'm a big Blackhawks fan where I grew up, and we've had some awesome Swedes on our team over the years, man. Absolutely. And I just saw that um, Nicholas Yalmerson uh, retired recently, and he was a Hawk for a while that I loved. And also, um, yeah. I noticed in your last video, you, you and Richard were rocking violent gentleman hoodies. Absolutely. So you got the box of merch. <laughs> it was a huge ass box, and we, uh, you know, every one of in the, uh, every one of us in the band just dived right in. Yeah. It, like poured everything up. So yeah. that's that's so great, man. Because like everybody, everybody thinks it's my company, and it's not. Like I just they have hockey gear. I like it. And when I asked them to send you guys a box, they I didn't they didn't even tell me what they were going to send. I was just like. Here's Richard's address. Just send him whatever you want. <laughs> like it's that's awesome. So, yeah, but I wear my cap every day. So, dude, that's awesome, man. <laughs> so, man, I feel like there was something else I was going to ask you, but I can't remember what it was off the top of my head. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is going to turn into just whatever. We can just talk about whatever at this point. So, um, actually, this will be a funny thing to bring up. So, Richard is so funny to me because you look at a picture of him and you're like dude, this is the hardest fucking dude ever. Yeah. And then you look at his Instagram and he's just collects fucking star Wars shit everywhere. Yes. Like, <laughs> dude, are, are you, are, do you have anything like that that you're super into that you collect? Do you game? Are you into movies? Anything like that? Um, I, 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 I like masks and stuff, especially Michael Myers masks. Uh, yeah. But I'm also like too cheap to buy the real, really good ones. <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> like, yeah. like Dude, but, I, I, I'm the same way. Uh, not even gonna <laughs> lie. Like, dude, I have so many other things I need to spend money on that it's like, whenever I, when I was a kid, when I was looking up like, like Slipknot, I want a Slipknot mask. Yeah. It's like, should I spend five hundred dollars on the real thing or just spend like eighty on the replica? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exa- exactly how I roll. Uh, you know, it's been like countless of times where I've just uh, sat down with eBay and did been so close so many times and then yeah. it just disappears so and then ah oh, yeah maybe next time and then yeah. i do it like that all the time so oh dude i could never do any ebay would stress me out so yeah. much dude i'd be like <laughs> so close to something you want and then at the last second some dude just comes in and oh, yeah. outbids you by like a dollar <laughs> dude yeah i'd be oh so Dude, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, we're at the point in this conversation where I honestly just want to sit here and just shoot the shit about whatever. But I feel like if we do that, we're going to sit here forever. And like yeah. people, are, <laughs> people, people that are watching are going to be like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> so, so at this point, we'll just, we'll, we'll talk about the, the, the standard stuff again. So the new EP Shaman comes out September 24th. Um, I actually pre, I loved what you did with the pre-orders. Um, it was like the first 200 people that got the pre-order got their name in the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah my name's in there. Absolutely. <laughs> like, and then, and then when I checked out, I was like, I saw the fine print that was like, yeah, whatever name you put on the order is the name that's going to be in the record. And I was like, oh, I should have put Tank the Tech in there, and I yeah. didn't. <laughs> so my real name's going to be in there. And nobody's going to know what it is. But yeah. um, the the pre-order packages are great, man. And I. Um, you know, one of the one I, I stress pre-orders to people that watch, like stress it hard because, you know, pre-order sales are a lot bigger than I think people realize because yes. it determines chart positions on entries and then maybe year end awards for stuff. And, you know, one of the things and I don't want to make this sound like I'm doing work and providing a service, but one of the things I've loved that I've been able to do with this reaction channel is, you know, a lot of the people in this community have turned me on to new music. And then in turn, I've been able to do that. And somebody commented after watching the flight of the fireflies reaction, they were like, well, 
I didn't expect that I was going to spend two hundred dollars in Orbiculture merch today after watching a music video, and I was like, Shit. I was like, damn, like that's the the reach that like some of these channels have nowadays. Yeah. Like, I I never meant to do reactions. That wasn't what I was trying to do on YouTube. And I've been critical of other reactors on YouTube. I'm not going to lie. I find some reactors that like, they, they literally turn on a video and then they just sit there and they're like, oh, sick. Yeah. Like, I like, <laughs> me personally, I don't get any entertainment from that, but I, I know there's a place for it. But at the end of the day, I think it's undeniable that even those people doing reactions, like they're turning people onto new music. Yeah. And it's like the reaction thing to me has kind of started becoming like, almost the new like metal magazine outlet and stuff like that. It's like people Absolutely. are discovering people are discovering bands from YouTube now, which is fantastic. And it, and it engages the audience so much too. Yeah. And I think that's what you guys have been really good about that I've noticed is that that fan connection with people. It's like you guys are responding to Instagram comments, YouTube comments, stuff like that. And it's like it would be super easy for a band to just post something and then just whatever, you know, let people talk yeah. about it and stuff like that. I think people, you guys are doing it right, man. People are going to appreciate you guys so much more and, and you'll get that loyalty in return going forward. Yeah. And we, 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 you know, we love to talk with the fans and uh, at some point, you know, it's, it, you know, the inboxes get a, a bit too much to handle, you know, because I'm too lazy to respond to everything. <laughs> but I try, I actually try to respond to every, uh, you know, in the messenger box in in the on the orbit uh, inbox. That that's I try, I try yeah, to ahead, buy that. I no, sorry. <laughs> no, but, I was gonna yeah, say you uh, could finish. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> no, but I uh, you know I try to and uh, and sometimes people get angry that I just take out the message and then don't don't respond for a couple of days. But uh, you know, it's the nature of the internet. Yeah, and I, dude, I, I can totally relate um, in terms of like, I understand where you're coming from in terms of it being time consuming. And that's, that's the one thing that people don't, they don't really realize enough. It's like, you know, all of these people in these bands are real people. They have <laughs> lives, they have family, they have stuff that they're doing. It's like, they're not just sitting there waiting for the next message to come in. Like it does take time sometimes and stuff like that. The fact that you even sit down and go through the messages to me is like impressive and almost mind blowing because I know tons of bands that they don't do that. They, at all. Yeah, so, you know, I just feel that, you know, I, I'd rather have like a hundred new messages than zero and uh, you know, people actually giving a shit and especially these messages when they they feel like the music and lyrics are so you know it means so much to them that you know they're going through you know tough shit on their own and they, you know orbit music helps them that's you know surreal yeah for me and uh yeah you know I, one one little reply back could you know make their their day i i hope yeah dude great outlook because mm -hmm. because you're right you, you never know what you might say to somebody that's going to like really just change their day or just make their day. And that's, that's a great outlook to have on it, man. And, and you know, there, yeah, there are the people online and stuff that yeah. it's probably not worth <laughs> responding to, but I've seen those too. <laughs> yeah. But for the, for the people that like legitimately, you know, love your music and stuff like that, it, it probably does. It means the world to them. And it's like, you know, again, going back to Adam from Lorna Shore, when I talked to him, like that was a big thing. You guys have a lot of similarities in terms of how you think about like the music and the business side and stuff. Like, you know, he even said that he's like, I got to a point in our career where I was like, why waste the time even talking to the people that don't care about us at all? Like, regardless of who they are. Yeah. It's like, if, if there's a kid that wants that legitimately likes our music and wants to sit here and talk to me about stuff and tell me about how he feels about my music, he's like, I'm going to give him full attention. Absolutely. So great outlook, man. Well, we're at uh for, for anybody that doesn't think about this kind of stuff, uh, you're like seven hours ahead of me. So it's uh, late That's evening correct. there for you. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm going to wrap this up and stuff like that, but dude, I just got to say thank you once again for just taking the time and jumping on, having a loose conversation. Thank you, dude. Um, when this new EP comes out, I can't wait to give it a spin. Um, I don't know if you can release like, 
divulge this information, but before the EP comes out, is there going to be any other music videos or anything like that? Yes. Yeah, okay. On cool. uh, August 27th. So. Perfect. So about a month before the EP comes out, we got a brand new one. Yeah. But, oh, you know, awesome. I can send you the EP if you want to. Really? <laughs> yeah. No problem. Okay. 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 <laughs> I mean, I've already pre-ordered it. I mean, yeah. so, uh, yeah. dude, okay, okay. I mean, hey, I'm not going to say no, man. I'm not going to say no at all. <laughs> Dude, that'd be sick. I would appreciate that. I would love to listen to it, man. I actually, one of my favorite things to do when I drive around town, dude, we're getting up. People are going to be so mad at me about this interview because half the time people are like, you talk too much. I was like, yeah, I know. Like, I'm yeah, a chatty but, person. But I love it. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite things to do when I go out, like, even, even just little things, like if I drive to the supermarket by my house, I never turn on the AC in my car. I always roll down the windows and I find something and I turn it all the way up in my car. And I can't tell you how many times I've like rolled up into the supermarket with like Mute the Silent or Saw or Nensha or something just blasting just yeah. because it's like, dude, I <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing something as simple as going to a supermarket. And I'm like rolling in just like, Fuck yeah. like let's fucking go. <laughs> like, dude, I love it. It's it's great, man. It's like it's awesome so I, I love doing that, dude. <laughs> Well, I cannot wait for the day that I'm either over there or you guys make it over here because, like, one, I would love to meet you guys in person, but two, I can't wait to see you guys live, man. It's going to be great. Oh, that was what I was going to ask. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, like, we're so off the rails on this. Um, I saw, um, I think it was Liquid Metal. Are you guys yeah. doing a live stream for them coming up or something like that? That is correct. Yes, that's the what I wanted to ask you Metal Detector. Uh, okay. Pretty much, you know, uh, like Spirit Box did. Yeah. So uh, it will be cool. And, awesome. Uh, you know, Jose is a great guy too. So uh, stoked as, as hell for that one. Yeah. So uh, make sure to don't miss out on that. Yeah, I'll try and find out some some more information on that and put that in the in the descriptions for this video and stuff. Is there a time frame on that? Do you know when that's happening, or can you say? Uh, it's 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 rather soon. Okay, uh, cool. I don't think I can spill too no, much about dude, it, but uh, totally fine. Yeah, dude. Okay, well, I'm gonna try and dig as much information as I can, yeah. up, and I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll make sure everybody that follows this page knows. But, um, well, yeah. Again, man, thank you very much for your time. I know we've sat here for a minute. It's getting late evening for you, but you know, anything I I can ever do to help you guys out or support. Just let me know, man. I don't care how small of a thing it is. I would love to help you guys out. I think you guys are fantastic people. I love your band. I cannot wait to see what you guys do in the future. Um, yeah, Thank just you, uh, uh, again, you. like and uh, you already do a lot for sure. Like, I try. I can already tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so, dude, it's. I like I. <laughs> again, this is going to be the most just off the wall all over the place interview but i'm like i'm like i'm stoked dude this is like the most excited i've 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 been to like talk to somebody on this channel and i just i really again want to thank you for your time thank you dude i really so. appreciate you know having me here I, uh, it's been a blast yes well everybody that watched thank you guys very much again the brand new ep shaman comes out september 24th pre-order links will be in the description below and all that stuff nicholas thank you once again man thank you and have a wonderful evening. You too. See you, bud.